following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey, ho, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a great show for you guys today, and um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with Lynn Lowry and Eric Braden. But before we get started, I just want to explain to anybody, if you see me get up and leave for a second. So the same thing I had two weeks ago with the dizziness and the vomiting and the other kinds of problems, I woke up with it again today. Uh, It's not as bad as it was then, so we couldn't cancel the show because these guests are very hard to get, and, um, and I'm super excited about having them on. But I just hope. That his nausea is not because he's pregnant. Yes, I hope it's not because I'm pregnant, not pregnant too. Anyway, <laughs> I'm really bad, you guys. I apologize. I'm gonna. I I, I actually don't look so bad, so I'm kind of happy. And if you see this little thing under my eye, I had a little oh, thing. Jimmy, shut up! Away. Nobody really gives a shit. No, because everybody can see it. See what? The fuck? Like they're looking thing. at the thing that's so vain. No, I am. Oh, yeah. I'm so vain. I'm not vain. I'm just perfect. You're perfect. But I want to talk today about vulgarity. Okay, talk about vulgarity. The word fuck, F-U-C-K. You can't say it too many times. What? Don't say it too many times. I'm sp- explaining it intelligently. Okay. Another one that thinks it's a bad word. No, no, we, we, we're not allowed to say it. It's I like know, that. but the word is in ancient German and Dutch, fuke. To fuke is to hit someone. And that's where the word F fuck came from. Today we use it in comedy. It gets a great laugh. Why? Because it makes you feel ashamed that you're listening to it. So your shame makes you shy and makes you laugh. If that word is used in a mean context, like they say it about Biden or Trump or anybody else, a human being, then it's not good because then it's mean, malicious and evil and destructive and horrible. But if you use that word to make people laugh, especially people that are not feeling well, people who have cancer or people who have just say disabilities, and they need a good laugh. And if you incorporate that word in your story, it's not vulgar, it's funny. And that's how it should be taken. So that word could be used to hurt someone or to make someone feel wonderful and happy. I agree. I was reprimanded. I go for these uh, vitamin shots, you know, the, the, the rage today. You go once a week, you get a two-hour drip bag of all vitamins, and they're really good. And I was reprimanded by the clinic I go because I used that word uh, a few times in jokes that I did with people. Meanwhile, I had an audience there. I have an audience there. And they requested at the desk, please book me when Ron is here because he's so funny. Well, it seems the patients liked it except one patient who is a snake in the grass and reported me to the clinic. I was called in, humiliated, insulted, (laughs) defamation. (laughs) Shut up, uh, up, Astro. Defamation of my. (laughs) Shut up! Defamation of my character. I get very upset when I think about it. They ruined my week, made me very unhappy. Now the decision is, do I go back on Friday or do I not go back on Friday? My ego tells me not to go back because I'm above it all. And my, uh, I guess my, my honest side or my down to earth side said, listen, the shot's good, screw them. Just go, keep your mouth shut, get your shot and leave. I can do that. But that's not 
what I was doing for six months. For six months, I was making people laugh and we were having a good time. I had that clinic rocking. The nurses were laughing, we were doing jokes, we had a great time. Now it all has to stop and I think it's sad. So I don't really know what to do. I'll decide on Friday morning whether or not to go in and get my shot. There you go. You know, because it was very upsetting. They took me in a room and a bunch of people were throwing things at me saying, did you say this? Did you say that? Horrible things that I never said. Or maybe some of them I might have said, but not the horrible ones. So there's a squeal of troublemaker, old bitch in that fucking place. That's definitely writing up reports on me with people. Jealous of who I am, possibly, because uh, they're miserable. They're unhappy. They're dying possibly, and they want everybody to die with them. Take them with you. That's the attitude. So I don't know what to do. Anyway, I'm leaving it up to you guys out there to tell me what I should do. Uh, in the chat room, I need your advice. I'm there for you. Now you be there for me. Should I go? Should I rise above it? Should I just not go and should I stay? Home? Rise above it and go. Yeah. So let me know. For your health. So, so chat room, let's hear what you have to say. Please. Also, uh, you guys, um, Ron has his General Milan haircut yes. going on. Next My week is our Clown Motel 3, the Clown Motel, Motel 3 show where we're going to have cast and crew coming on, and Ron is General Milan. So my haircut is military. I've never had it this short in years, and I like it. It's comfortable. They all Besides, say go. Huh? They say go. They say go, right? Yeah. Okay. I take your word for it. Guess what? I'll go. I'll go and get my vitamin shot and show them that uh, in this world where cursing is in every movie, on television, in everything, commercials are doing it now. Everybody uses the F word. It's no longer what it was years ago. It has become a part of the English language. And it's time that these squares, these, these pinched, pinched, that's the word, these pinched people get over it. Now, here's my point. I've been going there for 16 weeks. And for 16 weeks, I've been outrageous. No one has ever told me, Ron, please don't do that here. I would have stopped. I wouldn't have used vulgarity had I been told. But for 16 weeks, you let me do it. And then suddenly, because somebody reports me, you stop me in a horrible way that you made me feel so bad, so low. You, you, you really destroyed me for a week. And nobody deserves to do that to another human being. And I'm angry. Uh, my daughter, Deirdre, who you know is legal, wants to go after them. And I said, no, Deirdre, leave it alone. They're a hospital. So that's the story, folks. I tell you everything because I'm honest. And we're not getting treated properly in hospitals anymore anyway. Years ago, they treated us like kings. Nowadays, we're just another number. And you have to wait for, out for months to get an appointment with a doctor. It's just dreadful because we have too many people here now and not enough doctors and the hospitals are swamped, swamped with people that, that, that can't afford it. So there are all kinds of government, whatever things and they get it all free. It's a lot of politics. I don't want to get into it, but you all know it. Everybody out there that uses a hospital or a doctor, you know what crap we have to put up with. Absolutely. So it's what's up a everybody? Chat room is, is starting to fill up. We got a couple people missing. They sent me messages that they couldn't make it, so we're sending good wishes to Cindy Lady Lake and B. Claudia. Jeff Caperton's in the chat room. Stefan's in the chat room. Hey, Stefan, we missed you last week. You didn't make it. Dawn is in the chat room. She can't wait to see Eric Braden, uh, which is I'm very excited too because he's going to be a great ghost. And show your watch since you have orange on today. I match. Orange and green. Orange and green. Oh, no, that's, that's really not a green. That's a, that's a beautiful green, by the way. I don't know, it's not reflecting, but the, the green in that watch is gorgeous. And the band is orange like my shirt. We I wanna... love orange because my car, you know, is uh, is uh, bumblebee yellow. I like orange too. Um, all right, so we want to thank everybody for tuning in every week. Last week's show is doing exceptionally well. Um, the show we did last week with Kat Kramer and, and uh, Natalie Byrne. Um, it's doing very, very well. Very think, smart people we had last week. I think this week's is going to go really good. Um, and I still have my, 
my um, allergy and my nose is still pouring water and both my daughters now have it and Jimmy has it. So it must be, and it's not, Allergies the, it's bad. not the in pollen. the house. It's gotta be pollen. We, we just had the house blown out. In other words, a guy came and he vacuumed all of the air conditioning ducts. So the ducts are clean and there was no mold or anything that could cause this. So it's gotta be the fact that we have a very plush garden. Our garden has flowers and bushes and trees. And I don't think the desert works well with that stuff. So, um, so we want to thank everybody for tuning in. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Prime. Those are the biggest uh, biggest things that you can find. We're also on like 150 or 60 other ones, but those are the ones that everybody knows. So please listen to us on Apple Podcasts or watch us on YouTube. And um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to everything that's going on and all the cool things that are going on. And I'm looking forward to so the they want to know what hospital. Eisenhower Hospital in Palm Springs. What's well, that? Actually, it's in Rancho Mirage. But that's Eisenhower. Yes. Um, For those of you who wanted to know. So what else you got for us? What else have I got for you? The fact that I'm excited I'm going back to work. My script should be here soon. We've negotiated other movies with Michelle Kanan, who's directing my movie that I'm excited about, The Cursed Gift of Magic. Uh, the cast is getting bigger and better and bigger and better. Of course, we have the wonderful Renee Taylor playing my wife. You remember her from The Nanny. She played uh, Fran Drescher's mom. She's an hysterical woman, funny as all hell, and so kind and so sweet and so nice. It's going to be a pleasure and an honor to work with uh, Renee. Also, it'll be a great honor to work with Kevin Bacon in an upcoming film where I play his father. And then there's one I can't talk about, I don't think yet, maybe. No, I don't know which one the is wolf, it. Wolf. No. I can't talk about it. But this guy is a super super multi-million dollar superstar and I'll be working with him. <clears throat> so my career looks like it's starting to happen at 84 years old, which I'll be next month. So I wrote on Facebook the other day, don't give up because it may happen down the road, but if you give up, it'll never happen. And that was my attitude all my life and my career. It took me, uh, let's see, 64 years to get where I am today. And I never gave up. I always had a dream that one day I would be it, I would make it and I would be a good actor and I would have popularity. And all of that has come to pass at 84 years old. So my feelings are never give up on your dream because your dream can happen. Maybe not when you want it to, but it can happen. We have so to, hang in there, guys. We want to give a shout out to Hub Reynolds, who's in the chat room. He Hub Reynolds, hey, Hub, what's, what's doing with the wedding? Oh, there's no wedding. That got canceled. What? It got canceled. He dumped her. What? The, what's with you? <laughs> you keep dumping these broads. You engage them, and then you dump them. Anyway, we, our guest is here. Is you ready to go? Hey, Hub. You have to talk to Ron one day and to fill them all in. Hub, I have to give you advice on how to keep a relationship. Look how no, it was her. bad. What? It was it was bad. I well, know, stop but... picking the bad girls. Get go out and get the good girls. You know, just because they have forty eight G double breasts, it was like make... a catfish. Which just everybody be, else just know what because they're forty eight double D doesn't make them good women. Yes. You know, get over it. Stop thinking with your penis and start thinking with your brain, Hub. I talk to you like your father. All right, let's bring in our first guest and see how we do. Yes, I'm going to ask him if he thinks, oh, it's a her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lynn, how are hey, you doing? Hey, look, I know you. Look, 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 look that pretty I can, I can be a bad girl and a good girl. We know you can. <laughs> whatever, whatever you need. But what a smile on you. You've got a beautiful smile. Smile Thank for you. You yeah. really have a happy, happy face smile. Thank All you. right, now that we know that we it. can hear I love you, your smile. now that we know we can hear you, we're going to do a formal introduction. All right, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show, 
Uh, basically a phenomenal actress and horror icon, Lynn Lowry, who we're going to be working with soon on Zombie with the Shotgun 2. Oh, and um, we're looking her. forward to it. And so welcome to the show. This is my cool Thank outrageous you. town co-host, Ron Russell. I'm Jimmy Starr, and we're happy to have you. And Thank you, and you. I'm happy, happy to be here. You and I do a nude scene in bed where we're having wild sex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm in. That actually, well, that's not going to shock her because she only actually... kidding, only joking. Well, I'll tell you, if I was straight, oh. I would agree. But I'm gay, so guess what? We'll lay there and talk. Sounds good. I, uh, we have a chat room filled with people starting to fill up too. If you could say hi to everybody in the chat room. Okay, hi, everyone then, in the chat room. <laughs> and then, uh, so if you could say hi to Dawn. Dawn's a big fan, and she's sure on there. Hi from Dawn, and hello to her kitty, Katie. Oh, okay. Hi, Dawn. There you go. We never Katie. Yeah. Not Katie. yet. My she cat's is. name is Katie, too. Yeah, so. no, that's what she's saying. Hello to your oh, cat. Oh, oh, Dawn. Oh, okay. Yes, I got it. We're all down. So, everybody, in case you don't know Lynn, she's done all kinds of wonderful things. But since Ron started with this, the sex thing, we're going to talk about a, a movie. One of the movies that made her extremely well known <laughs> is a movie called Shivers. It was a David Cronenberg film. Mm -hmm. and, and I wrote down what the, uh, the the premise says. The residents of a suburban high-rise apartment building are being infected by a strain of parasites that turn them into sex-crazed fiends out to infect others by the slightest sexual contact. And I have right. to say, I've never seen Shivers. I've seen all your other films, but I've never seen Shivers. Oh, it's, no. it's very good. I mean, it really holds up, you know, even now. So. Oh, absolutely. It's and, you know, good. it was the first, like, body horror film that really came out so that's really you know david cronenberg made the body horror thing happen this was his first film it, it, sounds, like it, it sounds like it had a script it did it, it would die it a script. i hate the films where it's all a kill and no dialogue <laughs> yeah no there was a lot of dialogue and i, I play I nurse foresight so in it and uh the fact that I'll be working with you, we will watch that film. I love Shivers, it. Right? Yeah, Shivers. Is it still available, like the stream? You know, I think so. I mean, it was on. I think I don't know somewhere. Yeah, TV like, or, I'm the same yeah. somewhere. <laughs> That's what I do. I just think it's people awesome. say to me, "Where can we see your movies?" I say, "I don't know. They're out there somewhere." <laughs> I do <laughs> have a I do have a bunch of films on Amazon Prime, though. Oh, so you know, you know. Where yeah, you're. my latest one is Fang, which yeah, is years quite ago. Years ago, we used to say, "Go to your local theater." Mm -hmm. You know, actually, there's no such thing anymore as a local theater. So now your films go, God knows where. I don't know where my films are. Do you know where my films? Some are? Some of them, I know where some of them are. I so wait, let's go back because I know yeah. I was because uh, I followed you in social media. You were just on set doing a film, right? Yes, I was. Yes, Night oh. of the um, Dead Sorority Babes. <laughs> Night of the Dead oh, Sorority. That's got to be a good one. I love uh -huh. it. Night of the Sorority Babes. Night of the Dead Sorority Babes. So what I noticed on, I love the title what, for some what, I, what I noticed on IMTV with that is the fact that um, uh, it started out as a short and then you turned it into a feature, right? Yeah. Like, so it was a proof of concept, you know, to, to raise money for the feature. So oh, no, we did the short first and then... And then we just finished the feature. I just came home yes last night, actually, from working on it the last six days. So. Actually, you're, you're, not, you're not complaining. No, it's a great, it's a great film. Work. It's a lot of fun. I play a cannibal witch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I get embarrassed because I have to, people say, "What are you shooting now?" And I say, "Clown Hotel 3. <laughs> great. <laughs> I mean, one wasn't bad enough. Two was it just? Two was pretty good. But three, you're three. No, but you know what? They, they Joe Kelly finally got a script. Oh. I, I haunted him. Oh, I did. I haunted him for a year or more. I said, Joe, you have to have a story. It just can't be clowns eating people. It's got to be a story. Make <laughs> right. this thing. There are intelligent people, I right. think, that watch these films. Do you think our audiences are? Dumbbells or intellects? Oh, or, I think they're kind of both. You know, I mean, and I don't mean like dumb, like only that they they love horror. 
So, you know, that's what they love. But I think they're pretty smart about horror. I do too. Yeah, I wonder about that. I like thriller horror. Mm -hmm. That's the movies I pick. If they send me a script and it's a thriller horror, I get excited because it, it, it builds you to it. Right. It doesn't throw it at you like it's, oh, this is okay. We can cut his throat. Right. I like I like horror that I feel chilled by. That's that's a thriller. That's Chilling, a thriller. I feel you know, kind of disturbing. You know. Horror. What do you think about the a few films that are out there now where they cut a man's penis off? Um, you know, I've seen that. <laughs> um, <laughs> not You're, not a man. You're not a man. I sat in the theater when they did it. I went out. Oh, men get yeah. men go well, like not, you know, not being a man, it's like, eh, yeah, it's just another to be cut I off. Said, I said to my friend Joe, who's a writer, I said, you know what, Joe? Next, they're going to get a woman naked, spread her legs open, and put firecrackers in her vagina and blow her snatch off. He yes. said, oh, it's done already. But you know, that was in a, a, a it has been done. Saad yes. book, Murad de Saad book. No, they stuck Saad. firecrackers up her and blew her yes. up. I can't oh. believe this nonsense. It's insane. So hang on, my turn. I'm asking her. In the chat, to the question I want in the, to in the chat room. Da, 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 da. I want her answer. What <laughs> would you, would you let them do that to you? No, no, I, I don't. I think I would draw the line at that. So I would also. No. I would also. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to anyway. You're like iconic, so like you don't need right. to. Right. To you know what I'm That's for the up and coming people, you know, who need trying to build a name with the shock exactly. factor. You, know, you, you know what I'm going to sort of so criticize. You told me I could talk. No, talk. I've changed my mind. Uh, <laughs> your face, you know what? You're going to have difficulty with a lot of work because your face is very sweet. Aww. You have a very sweet face. I don't I see, see you as horrible. How are you really? Because I can be horrible. <laughs> you know what? I want to see your work because it's it's going to be difficult. So for they you just told me shivers to is on to be. ugly. Oh, it's not okay. possible. There In the go. text, when they wrote Shivers is on Tubi. Yeah. Um, and she's got a lot. She's She's got like 30, oh, I know she she has 30 films in development. Some of them are in pre-production. Some are in post-production. And heard, another 150 or 60 I, of them I, done. I, I think yes. she's worked with some friends of mine anyway. I, I'm popular. Yes, you You're are. very popular. I know your name. I just mm -hmm. never met you. But I think my uh, two of my friends work with you. We'll find out. Oh Jimmy, no, hold when I, we're gonna go over some of that. Jimmy so you guys, besides yeah. Shivers, another mm -hmm. film that um that Lynn was in, uh, and actually she was in both of them because she kind of had a little cameo in the remake, is the crazies. Mm -hmm. and the crazies. Um and the crazies, I don't know, when did that come out? What when did the crazies um, come out? The original was in 1973. Okay, so the original was 1973, you guys. <laughs> It's a great movie. It's a violence that causes insanity in people in a small Pennsylvania town. Oh, um, was... They did a remake of it in 2010, which I was happy to mm -hmm. see. They at least let you come in for like a cameo because I think yes. that's cool when they do that. Yeah, um, fun. Where was it in Pennsylvania? Oh, did I you... shot in Iowa for that, but the first one was in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yes. In sure. Evan City, Evan City. It was a George Romero film. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, now, I did a film in Pennsylvania too. We won't talk about it. It was in Pittsburgh too. It was in Pittsburgh. We won't mm -hmm. talk. About it. it was we called Broker. Don't do that. <laughs> so then, you guys. So Wait a minute. Both... Next question, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of them that you refuse to talk about? That's so bad. Oh no, I, I'm really no proud of everything I've done. No lemons. You never had a lemon. What? You never were in a, a film that's like a lemon, a bad film? Oh, so. yeah. But I I always feel like I do my best. I yeah, that's what I do. put 100% in, and everyone's always liked me, even if even if it's a lemon. So well, In this um, film that I was in that we won't mention, the critics said that the uh, producer hired all amateur people and non-professional people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In the business 64 years. So I don't think he was talking about me, but I was included. And I got a little upset with that because my performance was the only one that was real. Well, right. enough of experience. And they never gave me credit in that film. In the in the in the chat room, they're saying you have another film called Model Hunger that's mm -hmm. on TV. And 
the guys in there are talking about how attractive you are now, but when you did the crazies and stuff, you were they said hot AF, which means yep. extremely hot. <laughs> well, I mean, I was like, you know, 22. So, you know. No, well, I'm, no, pretty, you... I'm pretty hot in model hunger. I play a schizophrenic Southern Belle serial killer cannibal. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You got that cannibal thing down. I know. I'm just like, you know, eating everything. So I, I like love But it. you know what makes you such a great actress is the fact that you're not what you portray. It's, right. a, it's a stretch. For you, it's difficult, I'm sure. Going from a charming little housewife, beautiful girl, that you could be like a mother now or somebody's sweetheart, mm -hmm. into a horrible, disgusting creature. Yeah, and, no, it's really not that hard. <laughs> no, I, 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 want, I want to see it in one of your films. Yeah, well, you should see Fang because I I'm pretty awful in Fang and pretty disturbing. Uh, is, Fang, is it out already, Fang? Or? Um, it, it is. It's actually on Amazon Prime. There you go. You guys, Fang watch is on it. Amazon Prime. Yeah. I look awful in it though. But no, I don't I'm, mean looking. I'm I mean your demeanor. Look. You have a, such a lovely demeanor. How are you going to? It's see. I'm easy to go mean because I'm mean to begin with sometimes. Uh, so for me, mean is easy. Is mean easy for you? Yes. Yes, That's very. Amazing. It's amazing how. It's, well, it's, I've been acting for like fifty years, and I did a lot really? of theater and how could you training. Be as a child actress. Well, no. I mean, I think my first professional I, job is. I'm, I'm eighty. I'm eighty-four years old, yeah. and I'm in the business sixty-four years. So where the hell are you, fifty years in the business? Mm -hmm. How do you well, figure? I've been in the business 50 years. At 16, I worked with John Belushi in the summer stock um, play. There you go. Actually, you guys, let you me really do a little bit more you bragging. Don't, you don't look your age. And Thank I'm not, you. I'm not being flattering either. Uh, I appreciate I, that. I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass. I hate people that do that phony shit. Oh, you look divine. Okay, you look okay. wonderful. Let me talk. You want to talk? Yes. Yeah, so I some of the things that we've got going on. This you is got, my oh, husband. She, she hasn't only married, been in horror movies either, married, you guys. They're married 11 yeah. years. So you guys, hey, congratulations. Oh, wow. Typical marriage where I do all the talking. You guys, so she's been in a bunch of other things. Um, <laughs> one of the movies that she was in that's not a horror movie um, is called Fighting Mad with Peter mm -hmm. Fonda and Scott Glenn, who Ron knows, used to oh, know Scott Glenn. Scott Glenn. And he's still he? acting. I just watched a movie with him in it on... Uh, on uh, my friend, Netflix yesterday. My dear friend, Perry Winkler, who will be 103 in August. Wow. Scott Glee's aunt. Scott Glenn's aunt. Scott Glenn's aunt. So <laughs> Fighting Mad, you guys. And then everybody knows the movie Cat People with Natasha Kinski, John Hurd, Annette O'Toole, Malcolm McDowell, Ed Begley Jr., and John Larroquette. That's a great movie. Yes, uh, it is. Very you, were, good. you have all these like iconic movies, and now uh, mm -hmm. the movie you just did, Night of the Dead Sorority Babes, I'm bringing it up because you guys remember a few weeks ago we had Angel Nicole Bradford oh, and, yes, Angel. Uh, on the show, and she's one of the stars of the movie. I love her to mm -hmm. death. She's probably she's like great. the biggest up-and-coming horror you know, icon. Mm -hmm. uh, she the next ones and Kelsey Livengood was in it and she's in Clown Motel 2 with you mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, so they're I wonderful I love them both a lot really so then you have a movie called The Omicron Killer and I actually have a trailer for it that we're going to play and the reason I picked that one is number one I could find a, a trailer for it number two Felissa Rose is a really good friend of ours and she's in it you yeah. did you work with Felissa? yes yeah. and then yeah. Omicron a bunch of times. Yeah, I saw it several times. And also, Bai Ling is in it, and we're going to be working with Bai Ling on his a movie that he wrote that we're putting together right now. Oh, so great. I, tell us a little bit about Omnicron Killer. Well, I got to play a New York uh, cop who was uh, in charge of this whole precinct. So she was very, very tough and, you know, had, like, the New York accent, you know, going and everything. And, you know, it was great. It was, a, you know, great fun because it was a different kind of character for me to play. You know? Where and is she from? Is she from New York? Yes. Oh, she good. She's like, you know, she has that I'm, accent. I'm, and it was interesting because everybody on the movie was from New York, so they all had that New York accent. So I was like, oh, gosh, I hope I can do it right. So, that, you know, I worked on that a lot. What I want to talk about. They hire me because of my Brooklyn accent. My accent oh. is deep. My accent they don't have anymore. Only the old dead bodies have it. So if I'm on a film, I was on a film, and I was supposed to, I was a New Yorker, and the other guy that was a gangster 
was supposed to be a New Yorker. And he's mm -hmm. a good actor. And I said to him, listen, can I help you a little bit? He said, sure. I said, you're not really delivering the lines like a New Yorker. It's right. so, so bad in my ear. I hate when bad actors or actors that don't good, know, actors, who can't good do actors who don't do a good New York accent. Mm -hmm. It's just power. Yes. And I, I don't know what the line is. Let's make it up. I'm going to I'm going to kill all of you. Kill all of you. Mm -hmm. Say it. Um, I'm going to kill all of you. All of you. All, all, all of you is all of you. Right. And I said, repeat. He said, I'm going to kill all of you. Oh. I'm going to kill <laughs> yeah. all of you. He couldn't get that, whatever it was, for the life of him. So I said to the director, I said, can we change his line and give him something that more New York. So he said, what? I said, just put, forget about it. Now, I said to him, say forget about it. Forget about it. No, no, no. Forget about it. About it. It's a very difficult Forget. Act. <laughs> oh, it's a tricky I, act, I, for sure. I want to show the Omicron. So everybody, <laughs> check it out. This is the okay. Omicron Killer, starring Phyllis Rose, Byling, and Lynn Lowry. Enjoy, and we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> What do we got here? Take out your wallet. Save all the money you got. What the? This gold dude is man. Oh! Your name is John Doe. Seems we have no information on you whatsoever. You're different. Somehow I understand you. I will take good care of you. Everything okay in there, Doctor? Yes, yes, everything's fine. This is Detective Rod Callahan. Please warn Detective Rod, the patient that he is guarding is in fact a killer. He is very dangerous. Okay, what's the story? He's gone. bunch of people that are calling themselves the COVID cult. This lunatic walking around killing people has got to stop. Don't worry, I'm gonna get that motherfucker. First thing, I used to be a hairdresser because that's how I survived, you know, not in acting. I survived as a hairdresser. My uh, thoughts to you is grow that hair. You mm -hmm. look sensational with that long hair. Yeah. Younger and sexy and beautiful. I love the long hair on you. This is cute. I this have long cute. hair. I just I just got home from filming. I didn't have time to do my hair, oh, so this is like a little wig. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Because but I under look, it, my hair is long. And so. Look, you look gorgeous with the long hair. I love it. Yeah. Seriously. And you look great on screen. Yeah, I thought, you yeah. photographed. You do like good. You, you, and you, you were tough. You, I see you tough. How yeah. you young. And my second thing is, years ago when we did a trailer, we highlighted the special moments and kept the shot a little longer. Today with these flick, 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 they want to show you the whole movie in a hundred, it's very, very um, confusing. Right. 
I think this trailer should have had less of what it had in it and, and stayed on you and everybody else longer to get mm -hmm. us to understand what's going on. Do you agree with that about trailers being too... Da, 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 because of, uh, people have attention deficit, so they, yeah. they can't concentrate. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they should try to show so much in a trailer, but you know, they, they should just show things that are going to get your it's interest in months exactly. to see more. Exactly. Like when you were yelling at the guy, I would have liked a little more of that mm -hmm. because suddenly there's this pretty blonde broad and she's screaming. I mean, what is that all about? Right. It, didn't work. it didn't work. So let's go, let's let's talk a little bit about- um, Don't mind me calling you a broad. That's I'm okay. Broad. I've been called worse. <laughs> but in Brooklyn- It's all, not a bad thing. It's no, in bad. Brooklyn, oh, all, all hot women are called broads in Brooklyn. So that's a problem. <laughs> Hey you guys, some of the TV series Lynn's have been on, How to Survive a Marriage, Generations, Wild Spot, Side, Knots Landing. Um, I don't exactly know what Hell's Kitty is, but I remember Victoria Damari was in it, and I, I wrote down the people who, and every single person in it's been on our show. Max Wassa, Adrian Barbeau, Barbara Nettle, Joel Lakova, mm -hmm. Mary Weather, Kelly Maroney, Nina Hartley, Doug Jones, Michael <laughs> Berryman, Chanel Ryan, Victoria Damari, Augie Duke, Courtney Gaines, oh, Bill Obers, and Alyssa Dowling. Like, every one of them have been on our show. Yeah. So I don't even know what Hell's Kitty is, but you have a kitty named Kate. Like, what is Hell's Kitty? Well, um, to be really honest, I've never seen it. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Uh, it's good oh, to be I was I actually wanted to see it recently, and I tried to find it in, amongst my stuff, and I just couldn't find it. But basically, it's about this demonic cat. And oh, okay. I'm a fortune teller person in the film, and I get uh, inhabited by the cat at some point. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's pretty funny. There's a lot of funny stuff in it. That script sounds like it could be a good one. The, yeah. the, idea, the idea is good. So how did you how so what was some what were the first things was were the first things you did horror? Like how did you get so ensconced into like becoming a horror icon? Is you that know, what you wanted to do when you started or you didn't just wanted to act? No, I you know, I went to New York and I was studying. I wanted to be like, you know, a classical actress and do Shakespeare and uh, you know, check off, and I was cast in I Drink Your Blood, where I play a mute hippie on acid with rabies. So <laughs> that sort of started it, you know. That and, Lloyd Kaufman, was that a Lloyd Kaufman film? Because that sounds no, like No, no, but my, my very first film I did was actually started out as a short with Lloyd Kaufman, The okay. Battle of Love's Return. And then I did the feature I Drink Your Blood, and then Lloyd made uh, Battle into a, a feature. So, but he was the first person I worked with. Um, what was your first role in a horror movie? I drink your blood. Drink your blood. Oh, did you, yeah, but who did you play? She just told I you. I played a mute hippie on acid with rabies. A hippie on acid with rabies. And I cut this lady's hand off in a, with an electric carving knife. That was my <laughs> big like scene. And then so, I drink. I drink. What is that? I drink your blood. I drink your blood. It's blood. actually really a classic. I mean, it was the first film ever to be rated X for violence. Oh, wow. Oh, but it's, it's real campy now and fun and everything. And this so. Is, so this was like in the 70s then? Yes. This yeah, came I, out I, in I, 70, I, 1970. Oh, it's like it. over 50 years ago. I, I never cool. did horror movies. I did straight, you know, good stuff. And then I met Jimmy, and Jimmy said, you want to be in a horror movie? And I said, playing what? He said, a cop. I said, yeah, cop mm -hmm. on because that wasn't going to be anything. Now he's in a lot of horror movies. Now, well, he's a preacher, a cop, a, a gangster, a, a, priest. a priest. He plays a priest a lot. That one. So uh, I, I don't like uh, I don't like being killed in a movie because uh -huh. the red blood all over your body and it goes in my hair and it makes my hair pink. Yes, it's awful to get blood in your hair. See, you know, you mostly kill people, out. right? You kill people a lot more than yeah, you. Yeah, no, I, I kill them and you kill people. Them. <laughs> you kill people and eat people, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have done roles though where I've gotten covered in blood and stuff. I'm, I'm still not a horror person. Think about all the movies I'm going to do. Not once do I play a horror person. Yeah, you're always a person in it, but you're not one who goes killing people. You never. I've you never get to I, be the, I, oh, wait a minute. I have a movie. I know. You're going to be a vampire. I'm going to listen to this. I have a script 
Oh my God, Lynn, if you read this script, you did beg to be in this movie. I, I play, I play it, a gay <laughs> vampire, but not a faggot, a gay one, very seduced, mm -hmm. very, very elegant. And mm -hmm. my daughter now is becoming a vampire and I'm teaching her. So I take her to this enchanted land of unicorns and fantasy where she learns to, it's a beautiful, fabulous script. Oh, it sounds good. And it's not chop and kill them. It, it's done well. It, yeah. It's, no. I, I read the script. I've actually become. I read the script. I, I said, oh, my God. And when Jennifer James said to me, Ron, we couldn't think of anybody that has your look that could do it like you can. I was so honored and thrilled. That film is called O Negative, And I cannot wait to do it. We're working oh, on nice. it. It's, it's an actor's dream. Yeah! Wow! Wonderful story. I um I I and I tell this to Matt all the time because like I don't act, I produce, and um and I've got a bunch of things, and I've become very good friends with your manager Matt Chasen over the last oh, yes. mm -hmm. month. So we knew who who each other were, but now we're actually friends. We talk all the time, uh, and so uh and and I think that you and Bill Oberst Jr. you know are two talents that really should be you know in his is big of films as we can get you in because you guys are such great talents and sometimes you both overshadow some of the films that you're in just because you know you have so much talent and so uh mm -hmm. anything that i can get you guys in you know i'm, I'm gonna put I'm your gonna name on, on putting you i'm in. gonna put your name on jennifer james's casting list please i that would be wonderful I love I love that. That. oh negative is is a is an, a film where you act Mm -hmm. It's a practice. So, so you guys, it's not stupid. Let's bra job. brag a little bit more. Some, of the, some of the other short movies that uh, mm -hmm. Lynn has been in, and there's 180 of them, you guys. So I only picked out. <laughs> I picked out ones that we know the people. She did Wolf Hollow with Felissa Rose again, Robert Bess mm -hmm. and Ancient School Bradford, um, who they, uh, they're all friends of mine. Sky Sharks with Naomi Grossman, Tony Do Todd, uh, Amanda Burst, Barbara Nedjelikova. They're all friends. Splatter Disco. With Debbie Roshan, Ken Foray, which I met him years ago, but then we met him at a premiere a couple of weeks ago. And Sarah Nicklin, who is in a bunch of uh, Marcel Waltz movies, mm -hmm. Compelling mm -hmm. Evidence. I, I don't believe that's a horror movie. That's an older movie with Bridget Nielsen and Dana Plato, and I love Bridget Nielsen. Right. Um, so, what are some of your favorite horror movies that you've been in? Some of the indie ones. Which are some of the ones that you think, wow, I really enjoyed this one? Well, I mean, I really enjoyed doing Model Hunger. Because I got to do like, um, I mean, I've studied Tennessee Williams, you know, forever. And I've never had done a real Southern person, you know, in a film. And so I got to, you know, just kind of take all that, that history of working on all these Williams plays and just like turn her into a serial killer. So it was, it was great because she was elegant and she was very Southern and she was sexy and she was funny, but she did horrible things. And I think the audience actually felt felt kind of bad for her at the end, even though she does these awful, awful things. That's so I a, love that film. That sounds like a good. That's story. the one that's on. You that's could, the one that's on. Could, I could see I you in this movie playing the vampire enchantress. Hmm. Yes. Oh, it's a stunning role. They it's love you in the town. So because it's very, very. So you guys check out Model Hunger. Magical. It's on Tubi. Mr. And so is Fang, you guys. Fang is on Tubi. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, who are who are some of the? Uh, here's a question I like to ask, uh, like all the different people who come on the show, and and the answers are always pretty much different from everybody, except for so, sometimes. But just don't say Meryl Streep. But who are the, like? Okay, so a bucket list. You first of all, you've worked with every iconic horror person in the world. Actually, you, everybody. You, you know all Meryl of them. Street. You know all of them. So and bucket she's not list. The best bucket bucket list. Male and female actor, uh, an actress that you have never worked with before that you would like to work with, and they could be living or dead. They don't even have to be alive. You, you know, could, you can say Meryl uh, and then if you could have ever been in any movie that's ever been made in history what movie would you have liked to have been in okay um well the actress that i would have loved to work with is katherine hepburn oh, oh yeah that's a great one very and um the actor gosh uh so many clark gable yeah, that's good. we actually gone with the wind was on the other night so we watched the end of it on turner classic we watch a lot of turner classic movies so and actually, that's the film that if I had a film that I would ever want to do, it'd be Gone with the Wind. It's a great movie. Scarlet. 
Yes. It's Although I could play Melanie as well, but you know, the role. Yeah, I, I, could see, yes, I could see you. What you look like now is Melanie, mm -hmm. but be a bitch like Scarlett. Yes. That's an act. It's a great movie. I've actually never seen Gone with the Wind sitting all at one time. I've seen it all in pieces, but never all at one time. Oh, it's on and it's on, and we've watched different parts, but we watched the last half of it the other night. What do you think about film in general today with the wokeness and all what's going on in film? What's your opinion? Well, I mean, when you know, when I first started, we worked with 35 millimeters, so you had to have. A, you had to know how to act because they didn't have, they couldn't take it like, you know, 50 times. So right. you had to know what you were doing and they had to get it in a certain amount of time. And yeah, but Marilyn Monroe shot a scene 64 times. Yes, I, I know. 35 millimeters. So one of Ron's <laughs> best friends, just so you know, because I don't know if you know anything about him, but he, uh, one of his best friends was Jane Russell. She actually left his house. Uh, and was leaving his house and got ill on the plane going back to California, and and that's when she passed away. But they were oh. dear, dear friends for like the last ten or twelve years of her that's life. Brother and sister. Oh, no, I love her. Oh, I love fabulous. Jane. Jane was the nicest human being you ever want to meet. So honest. So mm -hmm. truthful. And, and before I got him on this show, he had a show called Set the Record Straight on TV in California, and he interviewed everybody, and he's worked, you know, and he's met everybody. So like Elizabeth Taylor and Betty Davis and. Uh, I don't know, pretty much like everybody. Well, when you're 84 off. years old, you meet a few people, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> you sure. think you bump into a few. <laughs> okay, so those are the ones. Okay, and now uh, what's a modern day movie that in the last like 20 years that you think would be fun to be in? Um, gosh. Oh. Do you watch movies? Do you like to, do you watch, do, do you watch I horror? Do. I'm just like, I'm trying to think of well, do you well, watch oh, Atonement? I would have loved oh, to, you good. know, if I was younger, to have been in Atonement. Yeah, that was a good film. Played one of those roles. That's one of my favorite films. So. Do you watch you horror movies, movies though? Like, do you I watch do. Horror? Okay. I do. I watch horror films. Do you have well, a I haven't horror seen movie? any recently. I mean, I saw The Terrifier, the first one, and um, I saw, what did I just say? I just saw something recently, but. I don't think it was all that great, so I don't really remember it. I yeah. love the film Tusk. I find it a little bit too much for me. Tusk. Oh, is yeah. that the one? That's the one where the guy goes and uh, the, the guy turns him into a walrus. Yes. That's a great movie. It is. Yes. It's so disturbing. It's, it's so really disturbing. disturbing. My uh, mom and I. My mom is ninety six, and she's seen like we've seen all the horror films together from Texas Chainsaw Massacre on. And we were watching Tusk, and in the beginning, you know, my mom was like, this is kind of slow. You know, we didn't know what was going to happen. and But by the end of it, we were just both like, oh, my God. It was unbelievable. Wait, do you prefer yourself in color or black and white? <laughs> uh, I look pretty good in both. You well, know, I actually did a, a, a um, film last year that was all in black and white, where I played a film fatale, and uh, that was a lot of fun. To do. You find it easier to work in black and white than color. I do. Black and white <laughs> makes the acting job very easy because really? black and white is dramatic already. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do, the black and white just enhances it. That's why Betty Davis films and mm -hmm. Joan films were such hits because they were black and white. Betty, I, I know this is a fact. We spoke about it. Betty never wanted to be in color. When she did The Queen, she was made up so terribly that the color was okay. But mm -hmm. Betty also felt that the shadowing and the shading of black and white is marvelous. It, it tells a story. So just, right. I even brought it up. But uh, black and white, if you want to get it across, nothing scares the hell out of you more than black and white. Mm -hmm. Frankenstein, Dracula, the original. Oh, yeah. Ooh. We watch a lot of that. So when you shoot a horror movie in color, you have to do a lot of blood. Right. It's so but, much better, you know, to for, for the audience to use their imagination. Oh, I love black and white. I love black and white. I think so too. I think some of the things like so like I watched Look, you know, I, wait, what Brando and Streetcar named Desire. Oh yeah. If you put that in color, goodbye, no good. It was the black and white of the, the lampshade. It's mm -hmm. magic. 
fuck yeah. more. I watched the first Terrifier, and I know it's a huge hit, and the second one was a huge hit. But for me, it was a little bit too much. Too too much. Right. You know, it was so much blood and everything. And so, like, I I prefer a, try to get a little bit more story. I realize that the audience now really likes all of that. Just like yeah. we've seen the last two movies that premieres we went to, penises got chopped off. That's why he brought it off. You know, it's because mm -hmm. no, but, but we're it's going a back. To, we're going back to stories. All the writers that I know, we talk. And they all said, Ron, you're right. We're starting to write plot, then chop. Mm -hmm. Plot, then chop. Not right. just chop, 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 chop. Uh, no, you want to get to know the character. Otherwise, you don't yeah. care what happens Absolutely. to them. You know. And just to keep chopping people up is, is insane. I think sick people watch that. People who love to watch pain and gore. Let me ask you, though. Did you watch any of the Saw movies? Have you ever yes. seen any? Oh, I mean, the first one I just loved. I, I did too. It was amazing. No, that's not the caterpillar. Not, it's not a caterpillar. And I, I think I watched two and three, and you know they were good. But then it's just as how how different can we torture and kill someone? That's the only thing that changes. Um, but I Lynn, like I like them though. I have to get this out, Lynn. If you haven't, you must see Marcel Waltz's Blind. Oh, yes. I, I have not seen that, and I, I'm a it fan is, of his. I love to work with every, him. It is what every horror movie should be. Right. It's suspenseful. Yes. Sarah, Sarah French was fabulous. Yes, I met Sarah uh, at a show last year, and she was lovely. She's so. a dear, dear friend of mine and Jimmy. Yeah. Very close. Her portrayal of a blind movie star that has a man living in her house that she doesn't know is there. It's super creepy. It's done very, very oh, well. Oh, Lynn, where'd you go? Lynn! Uh, what happened? <laughs> Lynn! <laughs> hey, everybody. We have a little technical difficulty. We're working it out right now. In the meantime, chat room's loving everything. Everybody says Marcel is awesome. And uh, I Jeff adore Caperton, Marcel. what's up? Marcel is my favorite producer. And I've director. never and uh, director and I've never been. Oh, he produces too. I've never been in one of his films, but I understand that if he shoots the bride, I play the father to the bride, so I'll be in that film. We have to speak. Yes, Jeff, you're right. We lost Lynn. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Lynn, what what could have happened? Hey Juan, do you know what happened to Lynn? What, what happened to Juan? <laughs> I wonder if that's us that's off and not them. Hey, you guys in the chat room, do you see us? Oh, no. Let me know. Uh, no, it's not us. Okay, they see us. Okay, so it's not us. It's her. Where is Maybe she? take her out and bring her back in, Juan. In the meantime, you guys, um, I don't have because I don't have a lot of notes since I was sick. I didn't take a lot of notes like I normally do of things that we could talk about. Things that we could talk about. Well, people seem to be interested in, in the behind the curtains of Hollywood. You know what goes on and what doesn't, but um, in my conversations with a lot of the famous movie stars of yesteryear, uh, I didn't actually question them at lunches or dinners because that would have been rude and they would have been uncomfortable. But in my own little way, I managed to get on the subject of a movie and then sort of sneak it in somehow, and then they opened up and told me. But yes, in fact, Betty Davis was not fond of color. She preferred black and white, as did Joan Crawford, Ida Lupino, all of these wonderful actresses of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s preferred black and white. I'm sure that if Marlon Brando were asked that question, he would prefer black and white as well. Uh, it makes drama easier, black and white. The points get across clearer. Color is so pretty and happy. It's very hard to make color ugly and mean. Although they did that in the House of Wax, the 1954 three-dimensional film. The House of Wax was shot in 3D. I love all the House of Waxes. I like the original one. And, I, Vincent Price. and I love the remake with Paris Hilton and everybody. There hey, you are. Back. There you are. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. That's okay. All we of a sudden, this, the sound was just gone. So It happens. It happens. It happens. <laughs> what were you asking her before we lost her? I'm 84. You think I remember? 
You don't ask people my age that question. So you, what did you do 10 minutes ago? What the hell do I remember? So you guys, you can follow Lynn on, on Instagram. She's Lowry underscore Lynn, L-O-W-R-Y underscore L-Y-N-N. So you can follow her because she posts all the stuff from all her different uh, shoots and the things that she's going on. Um, uh, we were talking about. Yeah, let's change it. Lynn, working with you would be a pleasure. You know why you're a pro. You've Thanks. been around. You know your goods. Uh, right. If I were working with you and I give you a wink, you know what to do. You mm -hmm. know to wink back. What do you think about pay for play? All these people that are coming into our movies who pay. Um, you know, I've seen work destroyed by these pay for play people because mm -hmm. they seen happen and the vintage actor was frustrated i won't mention who it was can i say it no you can't he has a very famous sister anyway mm -hmm. no yeah i no. we never ever used to have that at all you know you have, no, to have a certain amount of experience to be in a film and so to pay to have a role i know that the independent filmmakers need the money for their budget but I really wish that that wasn't the case. Because the viewers, yeah. I'm talking about to the viewers is, I am a monster. I am going to kill Lynn now, all right, with my eyes. I'm going to burn her with my extra radar eyes. And the pay for person comes in, the scene. Mm -hmm. And I say to Lynn, Zzz, you're dead. You're going to die any moment. Watch. And then the pay person says, oh, yes, watch what he is doing with his eyes. He is going to burn her with his x-ray vision. Did I do it right? <laughs> yes. I mean, I know, why does that make me look like shit? You know, because I look like I'm overacting. Right. Yeah, no, I know. It's I, I won't be in a film with pay, for, pay, pay to play. I won't be in a pay-to-play film. You are, though. Well, I am, but I'm not. <laughs> because I'm not playing with anybody that's not a, an actor. That's true. They always put you with all the stars. In the I, film, I, so. the direct, my movie, we're talking about, about Motel, Clown Motel 3. I've already told Kelly. I don't work uh, with uh, non-actors. Because I'm not going to bust my hump to do it well. And then these schmucks come along and blow it. Fuck that. Yeah. I think no, it's... I it's an unfortunate thing in the industry, but it's the only way a lot of things can get made and for people right. get to what they want to do. And thank God there's some good pe you know, good people doing it who are coming out with really good movies with it. Um, so it makes it a lot of fun. And I think that... Listen, it's quality, not quantity. And directors and producers better learn that. Uh, they wonder why they're not in feature films, why they're not in movies, you know, the real movies. And I tell them it's because your movies stink. <laughs> <laughs> He's very honest. If you made a film, oh, if you made a film that was worth it, like Blind, mm -hmm. you might get somewhere. Don't yeah. make, don't don't try to make a dollar. Go to work in a, as a mechanic, a, a, a garbage man, anything. I actually think Fang is really. You should I see that to, if you get a chance. I, 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 I've won four Best Actress Awards for it, and I play a woman with Parkinson's who is driving her son crazy to the point where he thinks he's literally turning into a rat. And it's a very disturbing psychological character study of these people. So I'm really proud of my performance in that. So We're it's gonna the, Ooh, Amazon Prime. You know, rat movies do well. I was in a movie called The Big Fat Fucking Friggin' Rat. Big Friggin' Rat. Big Friggin' Rat. <laughs> and they built a rat the size of a Volkswagen. And really? I, yeah, and I oh my since, God. since we live in Palm Springs, we leave like three o'clock in the morning to get on set. So of course I'm there before anybody else. And I didn't know it. And I walked from a curtain and suddenly the damn thing was there with its eyes red. It scared the hell out of me. My God, that's yeah. huge. And that rat had to uh, tear my leg off and try to bring me down in the basement to eat me. Uh, of course, we couldn't do it because they said, how old are you? One of the people at that time, I was like 82. 82. They said, oh, no, we can't allow that because of insurance reasons. 
uh, you're too old, you could break a hip. So I said, what are we going to do? They said, well, buy your wristwatch in the shot and then have the rat come up from the basement with your arm and the wristwatch so they know that he ate you in the basement. And right. I, was, I was disappointed because yeah. that would have been fun. You know? Yeah. So nowadays, though, now in your career now, you're always the killer? Are you still always the killer, pretty much? No, no, I was just in a film that Jason Horton did called A Hard Place, and I had a pretty interesting role in that, and I, I didn't kill anyone okay. in that. So, you know. Evil um, mother is the thing, if you're the evil mother with so Parkinson's. you're like me, and I'm a lot older than you are, but it just goes to show that 50-plus is valuable. Yes. And 50, and 50 plus can work. Mm -hmm. And 50 plus can bring in the bucks. So all of you out there that say, Ron Russell, that old man, what are you going to do with that old jerk? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Totally. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, yeah. I, I make the film have quality. Really, it's true. Right. Oh, absolutely. No. It's the age of the, of the actor rounds mm -hmm. out the film. Right. And have all young kids in a film. Not no, actually, possible. so uh, real quick, tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow is Dawn. You're, you're nice. I like you. Tomorrow's, I tomorrow's, tomorrow's, tomorrow's is Dawn's 60th birthday. So please just say, tell Dawn happy oh, 60th. Oh, happy, happy 60th? It's her 60th birthday? Yeah. Happy 60th birthday, Dawn. Yay, happy birthday, happy Dawn. birthday Dawn. Dawn. Go out and pick up a sailor. No, yeah, sorry. for sure. Have fun. Celebrate! Pick up a sailor. <laughs> I like love it. Uh, all right, so you guys, please follow Lynn. Check out. Let's please. check out Bang on on Tubi and what's the model one called again? Um, model? It's on Amazon Prime. Fang and okay. Model Hunger on Tubi. Okay, Model Hunger on Tubi. Fang on Amazon Prime. You guys follow Lynn on Instagram at Lowry underscore Lynn. Check out all her other movies. Uh, according to her IMDb, she's got so many of them that are like being shot and done that pretty soon she's probably going to have like 30 new ones coming out. And uh, it's going to be fantastic. I want to congratulate you on such a fabulous career. We also want to thank Matt for setting this interview up for us. And we look forward to working with you on uh, Zombie with a Shotgun 2. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I'm happy. I hope I have a scene with her. I'm sure we. I will. hope so. Let's make sure that happens. I make it happen. You know, I we like, can make anything happen. I love working with vintage actors mm -hmm. that have a lot of professionalism under their belt. There isn't any. You know, we, I, you and I work with these kids today. I mean, yeah. they're thirty year olds. I mean, what do they know at thirty? What did you know at thirty? What did I know? Right. At 30? Certainly right. not what we know now. Well, we'll so, show them. We'll get a scene together and we'll show them. Oh, I'm, I'm working with Renee Taylor. She plays my wife in a movie. I cannot wait. You know who she is, Renee Taylor? From the nanny? The, the nanny's mother, Fran mm -hmm. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. And she's excited to work with me because we're going to really bang it off each other. It's going to be such a delight. Yeah, that'll be great. We know what we're doing. And that makes my day. Doesn't it make your day better? Oh, absolutely. When you know you're going to be working with somebody that... It just happens. It's it's real. Right. Anyway, Lynn, thank I you like so you. much. I like you a Have lot. Have a good Lynn. one. Get some rest. I know you just got back from set, so enjoy yourself. You probably got another film to go to. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Sounds good. All righty. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay well, Lynn. Stay well. Oops. Yay. Bye, honey. She's very 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 nice. sweet. Very nice. I, I can't wait to work with her. It should be fun. So we're gonna take a quick music break, you guys. I think. And we're going to play uh, 10 Sharp, Ain't My Beating Heart. So enjoy the song, and our second guest should be coming soon, hopefully. All right. Bye, everybody. For a second.
What's up, everybody? We're back. That was uh, Ain't My Beating Heart by one of my favorite bands called, uh, now I forgot the name of them. Isn't that funny? Because I'm having a weird time. Ten Sharp. Okay, everybody. So I just got an email from Eric Braden's publicist saying that he's he was going to call us from the CBS lot of Young and the Restless and that, that they changed his schedule and he's got to shoot right now. He's actually shooting. So we're going to have to reschedule him, which is terrible because now we don't have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm bleeding. And the dog jumped on Ron and his Ast nails Astro cut him up, open. And he's got very, even though his nails are cut, they're very sharp. And he cut me at least a two inch cut all the way across my arm. Unbelievable. So I'll be here bleeding to death. So it's a terrible thing. And I don't know if Jeff Caperton, if you're still in the chat room, are you at home? Because I could send you a link and you could come and shoot the shit with us. In the meantime, uh, what I think we'll do though, uh, so. To, so you guys can get a little bit of idea of who our guest was going to be. Um, he, we've got a video called I'll Be Damned. And it's a, a book that Eric Braden wrote in 2017. And uh, Talk uh, to the camera, Jim. Oh, okay. I'm looking at everything. And, I, and while we're playing it, I'm going to see if I can get a link to Jeff Caperton and have him like come on and jump on with us. So here it is, you guys. Uh, I'll Be Damned, Eric Braden. There was an agency on Sunset Boulevard called the Paul Cohn Agency. And they came into a restaurant where I parked cars. The agents, Paul and Walter Conner. And then there's a, someone said he's German and come to the office, read for us. At that time, they needed a lot of German actors to be in American television programs about the Second World War. Then came a series called The Rat Patrol. I had one of the leads play the German officer, and the show went straight to number one. 
in America. I'd heard about soaps from my friend Dabney Coleman, who I respect very much as an actor, and uh, I asked him, I said, what the hell is a soap? When people had approached me for it. And he said, do it, you'll love it. Shortly thereafter, I was told that they wanted me for it. And I said, but I will not sign for more than three months. So I've been there now for 36 years. But to be frank with you, ever since I've done the show, YNR, I realize that I owe my existence, everything that I have and own, to the fans, to no one else, to the fans. Because they constitute the audience that create ratings. They in turn keep us at the networks. They in turn keep the show going. And I've often been asked by fans on Twitter, for example, uh, why I wouldn't want to write my biography. So I finally succumbed and did it. I know who he is. I remember him on television in the 1950s, early black... 60s, 60s. No, 50s. No, he started in the 60s. Well, what, well, maybe 60s, because I've seen... He's been him. acting for 64 years, and he's 83 years old. Yeah, well, I'm 83, and I'm acting for 64 years. So the two of us are exactly the same, except he's far more famous. But, because he did soap operas. But I remember him on Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, he was on everything. On Perry Mason. Perry on Mason. Twilight Zone. He was also in uh, um, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. All the Alpine's old... Shit black and white television of the 60s. I remember him. I even remember him when he was on the Twilight Zone. He played the guy that was... Just keep talking. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see, making He's sure I see the guy the that he was in the, the rocket ship and they were feeding him to keep him fat because they were going to cook him and eat him when he got to their planet. I remember him. I'll show you. I'm sorry he's not here. I would have enjoyed meeting him. Yeah, he's but we'll he'll be back. Him. We'll reschedule him. He's still working? Yeah. What do you mean? He, he, the, their show just got renewed for four more years. Which one is he on? He's on Young and the Restless. Young and the Restless. Holy smoke. That's a longie. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and he's been in so many things, so it's not any fun. And we have so many friends that have worked with him. <clears throat> you know, that are on those different shows. <clears throat> um, As I sit here bleeding to death, that's for okay. those of you who just joined us, Astro, my seven-pound little baby, jumped up in my lap and his hind leg fingernail, toenail, cut me a good two-inch cut. Look at that. You believe that, what my little honey did to me? So now I'm going to sit here blotting my blood. Um, I'm it's like a real horror movie. So, uh, Juan, if Jeff comes in, I think I sent him the link. I'm hoping that it works. If Jeff comes in, let me know. In the meantime, we got to talk about something else. So besides the blood on your arm, which well, is like from a horror movie. Well, maybe I'm just going to... Oh, bring him in. Bring him in, Juan. I'll just strip naked. Mm -hmm. Hey! <laughs> Our hero. Hey, guys. Help, help, Jeff, help, help. Our yeah, guest. This was not expected. <laughs> Our guest. Hey, everybody. So now we have superstar Jeff Caperton, which, what does she call you? What does Don call you in the chat room? I forgot. She He's our you. hero. She calls you something. So, you guys, we oh, haven't seen Jeff guy. in months since we, oh, yeah, the fall guy. We haven't seen Jeff <laughs> since we went to the premiere a couple of months ago in L.A. for the movie that he did the yeah. stunt driving in. Uh, now, but you're home in Texas because I follow all your stuff and you haven't been home lately. So what's been going on? Yeah, no, I've been actually home for a couple of days. I've been working a lot of races and stuff, uh, uh, NASCAR, MotoGP and some different things. So having a good time with that. But yeah, I'm, but I'm leaving again tomorrow. So <laughs> off to another deal. So. Yeah, he's working. Yeah, he's working. A little sort yes. of. <laughs> your name, Jeff? He just said he's leaving tomorrow. Is your name Jeff? That's okay. When, when you become Jeff, I'll ask you. Where are you going? Oh. Uh, just to Austin to work a race this weekend. 
So what do you do when you work a race, a car race? That's different than acting. Are it you depends actually on what driving? I'm doing. I do two different things. Um, I work for Circuit of the Americas in Austin, which is a, a racetrack. It's a, it's a road track. They do NASCAR, F1, MotoGP. And I work the track safety team. I'm a paramedic and fireman on the track safety team. So when they have a crash, we go get the drivers. And that's what I've been doing in my spare time. And then I also work for my son who owns a sports streaming service. So he does off-road races like Ultra 4 and uh, Nitro Circus and the, a lot of the motocross stuff, and I go to work for him as the broadcast uh, a director. So I'm the I'm the guy in the trailer screaming at the cameraman what to do. <laughs> there you go. And Jeff knows what to do, you guys, because he's got an Emmy as a TV journalist. Uh, actually, one or two Emmys. How many Emmys do you have? One. I see one. Well, I got two okay. nominations, one win. There you go. He's got I two lost nominations. One, but I'm not better. Um, they also uh, want to know in the chat room: Did you lose weight? Which you look like you did. Your face looks thin. I actually have lost a little bit of weight. Uh, thank you for noticing, chat room. <laughs> yeah, they totally uh, noticed yeah, it. About 20 pounds. Good for you. Intentional, yeah. Intentionally 20. Well, 20 is intentionally 20. I was going for 30. I kind of I'm kind of stuck at 20 for a while. Are you are you on that shot? No. Are you taking like an Ozempic or any of those shots? <laughs> no. No. So you just stopped eating. Just it again. Hollywood is skinny now. Everybody we know is on that shot, and they're all going to be yeah, skinny. Yeah, who's that pick or whatever? Yeah, skinny people. So skinny people. So the fat people that said that was wonderful and healthy, they know damn well mm -hmm. it's not healthy. That yeah. is not healthy. So all fat people should take this shot and lose weight and get healthy. That's it. Sure. Not all fat people oh. can afford it. It's expensive as fuck. I know, that. but soon yeah. they'll have it. Too. Yeah, eventually they were. It's been a fun show today. Lynn was awesome. And uh, once I went back and looked at her, I, I knew who she was. I've seen her in a bunch of stuff. I didn't recognize her yeah. now, but I did oh. recognize her when I went back. Lynn. Oh, Lynn. Lynn. Yes, yeah, she's been in a bunch of stuff. I, I like her. Yeah. I want to work for her. There's yeah, something she was about great. Her. And uh, talked about a lot of great people today. You talked about Marcel, who is awesome, and, and my friend, Amy Duke, who's a really good friend of mine. I was in in uh, Barney Berman's Wild Boar with her. And uh, so she's, we love uh, she's one of my favorite you, people. Her boyfriend, Mike, are two of my favorite people. They're great. How do you, how do you know Marcel? Were you at any of his premieres? I met him for you. I met him, you guys, uh, at the the Valentine's Day uh, oh, that's a great uh, party. Uh, fashion show thing, like two, three years ago. That and was a and great party. Friends after that. Yeah, he's a good guy. We went to his he's premiere. He did a movie two weeks ago. We went and saw Brute 1976. It was like two or three weeks ago we saw, and it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a retrospective uh, mm -hmm. in honor of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Hills Have Eyes kind of mixed together. Yeah, uh, uh, he invited me to the screening back in March. I just wasn't able to go, but I really wanted to be there, but I couldn't get out there. Yeah, it was fun. So how's the family? They're great. My wife's in the other room working, and my you know my youngest daughter got married two weeks ago. So you can. That's congratulations. The last one. I, uh, uh, that's the last one. They're all three married now. So now you're empty nest. Empty nest. Well, they didn't live at home anyway. They haven't come back since they went away to college, but uh, so good for them. But um, so life here isn't that much different, but <laughs> but their life, I'm sure, is a lot different. You have a lot of grandchildren, though, too, right? I do. I have five and one more on the way. Six grandchildren. Yeah. That's like you don't even look like a grandfather. <laughs> I feel like one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I've had a hell of a day. So wait, Don Hinton wants to know, you were in Wild Boar? Yeah. Not a very big part. I'm the guy that's already in the cage when they bring in Augie and them. I don't know if she saw it or not. But yeah, Barney Berman is a real good friend of mine. And he's a, if you it's don't know Barney, be... Barney's an Oscar winning it's special good. effects guy. Uh, he, won, he, he won the uh, Oscar for uh, Star Trek in 2009 for special effects. Hey, Jeff, mm -hmm. tomorrow is going to be Dawn's birthday. So oh, why, nice. don't, why don't you be a nice guy and say to Dawn that if ever you cheat on your wife, you'll cheat with Dawn. Oh, you got it, Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Dawn. <laughs> well, she's in love with you. She's so in love with you. It's disgusting. I can't believe she's 60. She looks great. Yeah, she looks great. She looks she great, and so she's got a problem with a, a next-door neighbor who's a hillbilly who took her glasses and threw them and broke them this oh, morning. So Don's upset. Don, I can deal with hillbillies. Yeah, Don. So, Arkansas. I can deal with hillbillies. So this is a message for your neighbors. Fuck those hillbillies. Put them, in the, put them into uh, the hills <laughs> have eyes and let them get eaten. <laughs> now, now we have to know why he, 
took your glasses off and broke. So. Let's hear the story. Oh, Don, tell us the story. She's smiling, so she's happy that we like mentioned her happy birthday. Which no, her tell us why. Birthday, Don. Listen, Jeff is going to make love to you if he ever cheats on his wife. <laughs> that, should be, that should make you happy, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I'll else you got going on? Time by my wife, but we'll see. <laughs> I see you. I see you have a mini series filming. I don't know. These are all. This is your page, I think. Malice 2.0, the On American Soil. So you got a little bit of stuff going on. It's been hard. I don't know what they are. I don't know anything about them. They popped up on my IMDb the other day, and I don't know anything about them. Oh, <laughs> maybe I got That's hired and nobody weird. called me. I don't know. Well, Malice, that... I know what's coming. Malice is a movie I did some stunts for. Um, but gosh, that's been months and months and months ago. Isn't that funny the way like things pop up? Because I had one pop up yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, by the way, we're going to have uh, our friend in Dallas and I are going to have some good news for you tomorrow. So, okay. We'll have a good. call tomorrow and talk about that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Would it be okay if I went to sleep a little? You know what, too? We're, we're, yeah, uh, I, we, we got a deck fun. mate for the cursed gift of magic. We're starting to reach out to people. You don't by chance know Christopher uh, Walken, Walken, do you? I don't. We I wish I did. Christopher we need to get to Christopher Walken. I know Christopher Walken. I can't. Listen, mm -hmm. when I lived as a kid in Astoria, Queens, Chris Walken lived there also. Mm -hmm. On the BMT subway at night, I used to come home, and sometimes Chris was on that train because he was on Broadway, and I think the King and I. Now, his aunt owned the bakery on the corner of Broadway and 31st Street in Queens, mm -hmm. and I used to get my birthday cakes from there. In that bakery, the aunt had up on top of the buns and the bread thousands of pictures of Chris as a ballet dancer because Chris uh -huh. was... A ballet yeah, great dancer. Answer. Yeah, great yeah. dancer. And I don't, and then I, there was a thing in Queens called confraternity. Confraternity was in a Christian church, and the church was called a lady of somebody, whatever. And I used to go there, I think, every Thursday night or Friday night to dance. And I used to dance with Chris's wife before he married her. Um, I don't think Chris ever went there, but she did. I can't contact these people. So it's amazing how you know people from 70 years ago and they yeah. forgot you. <laughs> yeah. And they forgot you. Did you see the deck? You. I sent you the deck, I think. Did I send it to you? For which one? The gift? For the cursed gift of magic. Did I send you the no. deck? No. Oh, I'm going to send it to you later because uh, it, it oh. looks really good. And we got yeah. uh, and you're in it. You're in it. We got oh, what's yeah? in it? <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> We got um, Renee Taylor to play my wife. I heard that. That's great. I think, I think we have, we're going to have John Payne in, Byling, Kate Linder. Yeah. We're really just the two that we don't have is Mira Sorvino that we would like to get and, uh, and, uh, and Christopher. I can Mira. Yeah, we need to. So that's why I want to send yeah, you the decks. Her, her, her step monster is a good friend of mine. <laughs> yes, I know. I know, which is cool. And then Don they, said, they talk. I mean, it's not, you know, but, uh, 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 they're not each other's favorite people, but they talk. So right. Also, I, her, uh, I actually never met her until the funeral. I met her at at, at Paul's uh, oh, uh, memorial service. Near Sorvino, he met oh. at, at Paul mm -hmm. Sorvino's funeral. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna I'm gonna send him the deck since he's in. Yeah. Well, and, Paul said that he wouldn't work. With, with, Paul loved my script. He did. He's the one who he's, sent it to him. Oh, good. Yeah. So then he knows well. the whole story. So you don't you have to know, go over well, it. For the audience, we have an audience out there, Mary. In case you forgot, <laughs> not a call. Oh, he's Paul a, liked it though. It's in our little fruit. Yeah, he did. He did very much actually. Yeah. He did, and now Mira will like it because yeah, Renee I, just, said, I didn't know the extent of his health problems at the time, and, uh, and right, yeah, of course, yeah, that was yeah. badly. Renee, Renee said the script is funny as all hell. She can't wait to do mm -hmm. it. She said it is so funny. It, is, funny. it, it is a little the bit. right. The right actors and the parts. It could be hilarious. It could be. Well, we, we, I, I, I fine tuned it, and now it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Added another character. I added a sister to uh, my lead, so it's it's it, now it's gotten really to, to be good. It's going to be a nice movie. I don't know how much money it'll make, but it's a nice movie. It'll be so good. just maybe, it's kind of unique. It may be one of those things that just catches, you know, some yeah. my personal theater at a festival and and really put it out there. So. Well, I'll it's, a, it's a horror movie that's very I can, I can text it to you uh, easier because I, I otherwise I got to send it in a wee transfer. It's too big to like yeah, send. That's fine. That's fine. 
regular. Um, and Don wrote that she's not sure, but maybe she could have been because the lady, her next door neighbor, is angry because Don told her she needs to put on a bra. <laughs> you told oh, this I'm woman to take them off. Why is she trying to get him to put them on? <laughs> so this woman, does she have big tits? I don't know if she has big tits, but I mean, if she has, but if little, she's a hillbilly, does she have teeth? If she, <laughs> if she has little boobies, you don't have to wear a bra. You no. only wear a bra. Oh, Kate had some boobies, yeah. Big boobs. I like you know what, what I'm doing? Just smack her a little bit. Knock the shit out of her. T tell her. You come over. Yeah. Tell her you got Ron Russell good after you. So let's talk about cool Hollywood stories. Do you, what, do you have any cool Hollywood stories? You've met so many cool people. Who is one of the coolest oh, people you've ever met? Me. Besides the meeting Ron. Who is one of I ever met? Yeah. Uh, gosh, I've met a lot of people that I never thought I'd meet in my life. Um. Oh, well, who are some uh, of the people you never I thought met, you'd I'm sorry? Who are some of the people that you never thought you'd met? I have a bunch of those, too. Uh, one of them, you know, because we were talking about Lanny Kazan about a year ago, and then a few months later I met her and got to spend about two hours with her. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady and thoroughly enjoyed. I was kind of her body person for about two hours, kind of helping her get around and uh, get through this crowd, this large crowd where we were at. And they, they kind of assigned me to her to – make sure that she was taken care of and didn't have to do too much walking. And uh, she was wonderful. But I mean, guys, man, gosh, guys like Kevin Hart and Will Ferrell, uh, Mark Wahlberg is one of the coolest guys I ever met. Never thought I'd meet him and ended up working with him in two films. Uh, one by request. He actually requested me for the second film after the first one. So that was really cool. Um, gosh, Rob Reiner. Um, I can't think of it, but I've worked a couple yeah, times. That was nice. I'm sorry. You know, I I tried to get Kevin Hart for a movie uh, mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, you can't um, afford him now. <laughs> even then, you know, we, we, it was a speaking role. It could have taken him a day to record it, probably. And he said mm -hmm. he and we offered him five hundred thousand dollars, and he said he doesn't get out of bed under three million. Yeah, we'll stay in bed because one day nobody yeah. will want him, and then he yeah. could stay. And Don says, "No, Ron, yeah. she's thirty years younger than me, and her tits are down to her knees." <laughs> <laughs> oh, then in that case, what you do is well, you maybe I need to volunteer to go talk to her. <laughs> no, no, what you do, Dawn, listen to me. Get a shotgun, then tell her to drop her dress. You get her tits and make them swing back and forth like a pendulum, and then you shoot at them, and you see if you could shoot those tits off of her. No, don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never dreamed in a million years I'd meet Betty Davis. Yeah. Not only not only meeting Betty, but mm -hmm. getting to know her. That mm -hmm. was the thing where I saw yeah. her on several occasions as a, yeah. as a friend. So mm -hmm. life, life is full of magic. Yeah. And certainly one of those people is uh, Miss Jane Russell. I had the fortune of meeting her. I was with Art Linkletter at an event in Washington, D.C. and got to meet her many years ago. So that was nice. Well, she was my best friend. So yeah, she was she was very very nice. I didn't get to know her, but I, I met her that one day. She was very very sweet to me. So she's she was family. She was like my yeah. sister. She was one of my mother's favorites. So it was a big deal. I had to call my mom immediately and tell her I just met Jane Russell. So I, I you know I miss her whenever her name comes up. I just and I'm so sorry Jimmy never met her. I would have loved to. My, meet her. my daughters loved her. She loved my daughters. She was family. Yeah. Jane was family. I miss her. Yeah. As I said, whenever her name, like right now, I yeah, yeah, I saw your face. I felt bad after I said. <laughs> no, things flash through my mind. Um, just the, the, the Jane and I never exchanged an "I love you" because I know she didn't care for that kind of bullshit. If you did the Hollywood stuff, darling, let's do lunch. She would say, "Ugh," she didn't like people like that. But the day I drove her to the airport to to return to California. For what reason, I don't know. I hugged her and I said, you know, Russell, I love you. And she said back to me, I'm going to cry. She looked back at me and she said, you know, Russell, I love you too. Wow. And those are the last words I heard from my buddy. Because then yeah. she died, which is terrible. Yeah. Well, my, my two favorite things that ever happened to me, and Ron won't think they're a big deal, but anybody who in horror is in horror will think they're a big deal. One of the things that happened is I was at a convention, Spooky Empire, and it all happened in the same weekend, actually. Uh, and I became really good friends with uh, Malcolm McDowell, 
And so he uh, would like call me for this tea break and say, let's go do tea. You know, and, he, and I went to dinner with him. And then yeah. the last morning he did breakfast with, it was him, Lance Henriksen and Doug Bradley. And Lance Henriksen's oh, my ass. Yeah. And they called me and said, would you like to have dinner or breakfast with us? And I went and had breakfast with just me and the three of them. Uh, oh, and cool. it was the coolest thing ever. And then at that same event, I met Clive Barker. And Clive, you know, back then I was a clothing designer also. And, and so yeah. I, had, uh, I had invited Clive Barker to come and see if he would wear any of the clothes. And he, he declined. And then uh, after Malcolm McDowell went, uh, Clive Barker called me because I had given him my, my card and said, oh, my God, I saw the stuff, you know, you gave to Doug. I'd love to come. So he came to my room at 11 o'clock at night. And he stayed till 7 o'clock in the morning talking oh, yeah. all about Hollywood stories and horror movies oh, and making hilarious. movies who was gay and who was straight. And he gave me one of his books and he drew a one of a kind picture in it. You know, he's an artist and his art yeah, sells. Yeah. So he gave me, and then he gave me the book, you know, and uh, it was the coolest thing ever. I was so excited. I was like, I was like high on it for like a fucking month. I was so excited because those are like my favorite horror people. And I was with all yeah. of them at one time. So that shit That's was amazing. fun. I don't know any like a list you like, like I'm, I don't know a Mark Wahlberg person yet, but we might be doing something with him. Yeah. Well, I don't know him, know him, but I mean, I've worked with him and done everything. Well, I, I, actually, I, I, when I was working with Kevin Hart, I met his at the time wife. They're not married anymore, uh, um, and and she and I have actually become really good friends and still friends with her. She's in New York right now doing a play, but um, she and I are, are still friends. And she's the uh, 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 she's the baby mama he's always talking about in his act. So yes, I always say this, and I have to say it again. There are three things in Hollywood you have to know. I met her, I know her, and she's my friend. Those are the right. three things. Too many people in Hollywood meet a star, stand next to them and get a picture on a carpet, and not then tell them they're my friend. Right. No, that actor is not your friend. That actor simply was there and you were there. Right. Jane Russell was my friend. Betty Davis, I knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say who did I meet? Sophia Loren, I met. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. So yeah. you have to be very careful when you say who's a friend, who's a. Meet. I get that yeah. all the time, Elton John, because like I was Elton John's guest at a concert where I addressed mm -hmm. him and yeah, they invited you know me, him. and so I went to his dressing room backstage. I only met him once, but people all the time like, "Oh, can you go get in touch yeah. with Elton John?" Like, hey, Elton John doesn't fucking yeah. know me. He was like, nice to me because I did something right. for him. But Sorry. I was like, I don't know, exactly. I don't know him. I just got a so, picture. <laughs> <laughs> it brings me to, yes, I know, oh, my God, so many movie stars of uh, the past, but I only met most of them. Right. Some of them, Debbie Reynolds, I knew. Mm -hmm. Jane, uh, Joan Rivers, I knew. Mm -hmm. They were not my friends. I never hung out right. with them. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who did I've I met tons of people. You know, in the 80s when I worked for ABC News, um, we would have actors and actresses come in to do Good Morning America interviews. But of course, because of the time difference, they would have to come in at three or four o'clock in the morning, you know, to get in hair and makeup and stuff. And uh, um, my, uh, 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 Raquel Welch was coming in and word got out oh, that Raquel yeah. Welch was coming in. Yeah, word got out that she was coming in and you know, I'd have to be at work till eight o'clock. Nobody had to be at work till eight o'clock. We had a couple of guys that worked the overnight desk, but you know, for some reason, at three o'clock in the morning, half the staff was in the newsroom <laughs> when when Raquel Welch came in. We just all happened to be there at three o'clock that morning. Yeah, and <laughs> she, was, she, she wasn't. She wasn't very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so many yeah. people disliked her. She was very fresh. I yeah. contacted her. Her. Uh, She's evil. Raquel Welch was nasty. I contacted her agent to come on her her publicist to come on our show, and she responded, "Absolutely not." <laughs> <laughs> like no way, there's no way. Well, she must have watched one of our shows, and it mm -hmm. it wasn't for her. But I met Raquel Welch, <coughs> and she was not very nice yeah. to any. She was very curt, very stuck up. Very, very few people who who weren't nice. I've been surprised by how friendly a lot of these guys are, but there have been a few that were not nice. Uh, worked with one last year that I'll never work with again. In fact, I, if I'd had my way, we'd have fired him off the set that day. I was so mad, <laughs> but he what was just talking. Oh, he's not going to, he's not going to tell you who, who I'm talking about because <laughs> he's a pretty big star and it might get me in trouble, but um, he was rude to the crew. I mean, just abusive to the crew. And my producer partner uh, was, was horribly rude to him. And just if, if, 
we wouldn't have had to reshot those three days. I would have just said, get rid of him. We'll get somebody else. He was awful. No, I, I, you see, no, I would tell them off. And then get fired, and then I could collect unemployment and screw them. <laughs> I'm not afraid of anybody, Jeff. You know that. Who's a, who's like your a bucket list? Who's like a bucket list person for you? Like if you could work for any? No, 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 don't do that. No, yeah. any director? No, any director and any actor. Like if you could like work with them because you've already worked with a lot of big people. Who are who's a director that you would think would be? Oh my God, so great to work with. I'm not sure. You know, I really enjoyed surprise. It surprised me. I really enjoyed working for Rob Reiner. I worked for him twice. I did LBJ and a movie called Shock and Awe. And Rob Reiner, you know, he 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 comes across as you know in interviews as a, a certain way. But I mean, when you're on set with him, he's just the nicest guy. He'll stand there and talk to you forever, and he'll tell you stories and historical context to the scene we're doing and all these things. It was really nice. And when he found out I drove all the way from Houston to come be in his movie, he gave me a hug right there on the set in front of like all the extras and everything. And I knew a lot of the extras that were over there working. And after he gave me this big hug and then walked away and I turned to all my friends over where the extras were and said, did anybody get a picture of that? Anybody, nobody got a picture of that. Nobody bothered to snap that. But uh, he was he was good in, in, and he was, he's a very good director. He was fun to work with. Um, uh, somebody that I would like to work with. I'd actually like to work for Marcel. I'd like to do a movie with him. I think that would be interesting. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be in one of his movies. Yeah. Brian. I would have loved to work with Clint Eastwood as a director, um, but I don't think he's doing anything else now. I don't know if he's still working or not, but um, my the clock is running well, on that one. But well, I get interviewed a lot, and one of the questions when they interview me is they say, how do you... I know, like, are you nervous or afraid to meet all the stars you've met? And how do you? Mm -hmm. I said, what? No, I said they're actors mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. I I never think of them as being, even Betty Davis. Mm -hmm. um, I treated her like a woman, like a broad. Yeah. I, you yeah. had to hear that. When I was really first moved to LA, I think it did me well that I got to meet all those people while I was working in news because we would meet them. You know, because we're the LA bureau, we were the Hollywood entertainment you know, guys, you know, for Good Morning America and whatever else. And so I got to meet a lot of people. And then we always did the obits when somebody died. And so we would have to reach out and get a hold of somebody and get comments from their friends and things. So that by the time I started acting years later, um, I'd already done some sitcoms and different things. So it, it wasn't the one as big a deal. Yeah, I was excited to meet some of them because they're, they're big guys, but I wasn't I wasn't necessarily nervous acting with them. Now, if I had to go do a scene with Robert De Niro or somebody, I'd probably wet myself. But um, in fact, I have a really good friend that was in uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, and he had two scenes with Robert uh, uh, De Niro, and he said he was absolutely terrified. <laughs> he said he was very nice, but he was absolutely if terrified. If I had to met Robert De Niro, the first question I'd ask him would be, how comfortable or uncomfortable with you with having a gay father? Because his father was gay. And that's um, a question that I think everybody would like the answer to, yeah. because we all know Ron doesn't like Robert De Niro. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's true. No, doesn't no. like his politics. As an actor, he's phenomenal. Yeah. No, I don't like no. Yeah. I don't like anyone that leaves. I don't like anyone that uses their fame to defy to hurt someone else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I I don't care for. I think that was mean of him to say "f mm -hmm. you" to Trump. Mind your business. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You're an actor. Act. We don't need yeah. you saying "f you" to the ex president Speaking of the Robert United De Niro. Our, the movie I just finished producing, uh, Three Days or Else, just got accepted into the Tribeca Film Festival. Oh, there you go. Festival. Yeah, it's his film festival. So yeah, that's, that's kind a of a big deal. I'm just trying to figure out how I can afford to go to New York for it now. <laughs> no, I think that's a freaking awesome. I yeah, think I'm uh, about that. But yeah, well, I, I think one person that did make me nervous. I, I had a really long, long scene I had to do with Sean Penn. And everybody, everybody warned me, you know, about Sean and, you know, don't don't say certain things to him, don't behave certain ways around him, all this stuff. And I get there and he was actually really, really nice. We had a really, really long scene. It was, uh, it was supposed to be in a congressional office building. So we have to walk down this long hall while we're talking, go through these doors and then down this giant marble staircase all in one shot. And one thing I will say about him, he did not know his lines because <laughs> we had to do it about 300 times. But when we'd have to, we, we, they'd say cut back to one and we'd, we'd turn around and he would open the door for me to go out of the staircase every single time we went back through there. I'm like, I just felt weird that Sean Penn was opening a door for me every time we'd go back through. 
but he was very nice. But I was I was nervous around him for some reason. And again, he's he and I don't particularly see eye to eye. He's kind of a strange cat, but uh, I was a little nervous working with him. And then I got frustrated I when he didn't do the replies. A lot of the times, the people that you that people have had problems with, those aren't usually the people I ever have problems with. Yeah, it's just the opposite. It's usually just the opposite for me. Like people yeah. don't like. There's only one actor really that I don't like. Uh, William Forsyth is the only one I don't like. Yeah. Just because he's not nice. He's not nice. He's not nice to me at least. Yeah. Uh, but everybody else yeah. I like. And, and the people that I would freak out about are more lower people, lower level people. Like I tell this to Ron all the time. I've invited her on this show a fucking hundred times. Molly Ringwald. Like I'm an '80s person. Like, right. you know, <clears throat> Sixteen Candles and right. Breakfast Club and stuff. All those actors. I would be. I'm way more excited to meet them than to meet like a Will right. Ferrell. But yeah. just because they're what I grew up with. Yeah, um, she was in the news wow. yesterday for something. Yeah, I know. Fun dumbass. We, we oh, have yeah, the, comment she made. I remember that. Story. We have the best story in the world. I'll let Jimmy tell it. I have met Catherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Ida Lupino. I have met all the greatest stars of the of my era. And I never got faced. You know, Ida Lupino's sister I liked a lot because she was a, a good storyteller. But the rest of them were, okay. Jimmy and I are at a television premiere in New York for a black network. And it's a black uh, comedy hour show. It's going to be every week. What do you call them? Shows? Yeah, TV series. TV series. It was hilarious. And as I'm walking through the crowd, seeing everybody, there she is, Kathy Sledge. Oh. I began to jump up and down it was like ridiculous. an idiot. I was 50 yelling, fucking Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy. I was 50 yards away from him, literally. <laughs> and you can hear me screaming, Jimmy, Jimmy, come here, come here. It's Kathy Sledge, because we are family, you know, it's a gay icon song. And I wanted a picture with us. He wanted a picture, and he doesn't take a camera, so I, I had to run I over. I mean, I have pictures of movie stars I'm with, I don't give a shit. But her, I got so excited. Then we yeah. spoke and I hugged her and I thanked her. I said, thank you so much from the gay world because we, our family, were such an important song to all of us. And she was our first guest when we went from radio to video. She was our very first guest. And I've, okay. seen, wow. oh, I've seen her countless times. Yeah, we see her a bunch now. And now when yeah. we see each other, we hug and we kiss. I That's love great. Kathy Sledge. Kathy Sledge, and she's a darling person. She's everything that you would want to know in a human being. And her sister is just as sweet and lovely. Mm -hmm. I've got to know most of the family. That's yeah, nice. we had a good time with it. So, so, so was Will Ferrell pretty nice? Like, I, I actually think he's very funny. No, I heard Will, uh, Will he was, Ferrell. He was. He was very quiet. Um, you know, when he's not on, he's he just stands there, very, very quiet. And, I mean, sometimes he'll hang around on set. Sometimes he'll go back to his dressing room, whatever. He's just, he's, he's very mellow and he, he speaks very soft and and then you know action and he turns on he becomes you know the Will Ferrell that, that everybody knows. That's um, what he said about Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers is not that funny in real life. Yeah. Until she turns on yeah. and then she's very yeah, funny. Yeah, I've met her several times. We used to go to Carla when I lived there in the '80s. We would go to Carlos and Charlie's in Hollywood because she would be there every Thursday night because that's when she did the Monday morning Carson show, the Monday night Carson show every week. She was the regular. You must have been there with you, Monday Jeff. Night. Yeah, that you probably were. I mean, but but we would go there because she would she would try out her material for the following Monday, and so we would yeah, go watch her work out her material, and then we'd watch the show on Monday and see what she used and what she didn't use and all that. She would literally right. stand up there with a yellow pad, you know, and read jokes off her yellow pad. Yes, I went. So much fun. I met uh, Melissa and got to know her a little bit back then. Yeah, he went to that a lot. Several times I went there, and one time I was there. Debbie was Debbie Reynolds. Was yeah, there. and I know, yeah. I know Debbie, so yeah. I sat next to Debbie, Debbie in the bleachers, yeah. and, and, in between, yeah. and in between Joan's jokes, we talked. Now we're leaving the the, the place, and there's a limo outside, and it's Je Joan Rivers' limo. Debbie said, yeah. "Ron, we have to come in the limo. I want to talk to you about this. Was about Jane Russell's benefit to get money for her church's roof." So I get in the car and Joan Rivers gets in the car. There I am, Debbie Reynolds to my left, Joan Rivers to my right. Mm -hmm. Well, if I had a camera, I would have had the biggest show and the best show in the world, but we would have had to censor it because every other word was fuck. Right. <laughs> they love the word and it was in everything. Hysterical, I almost peed myself. Of course, That's I didn't okay. stay long, but I wish I could have. 
Then Jane, Joan said, could we drop you off someplace? I said, no, I have my own car. And that was that. But I yeah. told people at that time what they were saying. Probably taking the ride and got a cab back. <laughs> no, but now I wish, I wish now I remembered what they said. But I did tell people uh, out in the street what they had just f finished talking about. And I don't remember what it was, but those two broads together. Oh, I'm so sorry they never did a show. Debbie Reynolds and Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. Two of the funniest wildest you're people. actually pretty friendly with john schneider too right like i've, I've yeah, met him twice yeah. i, know john I love him. I, uh got to know him a little bit when i did a movie with him and then got invited to his birthday party the next year and then after that we just kind of became friends i did another movie with him and now um there's some some things that are happening right now that are kind of exciting that that i can't talk about that he and i are working on so um, that's too yeah. Big. yeah i really like him uh he, I've always thought he was great, and I loved him on like a lot of his stuff. You know that he's not as well known for. Um, yeah. Like, I, uh, wasn't he on that that show where they like do the plastic surgery? Oh, the haves and have-nots. No, no. The uh, Tyler Perry series. He was on that. Yeah. With, What's uh, the movie with the two guys in Miami and they have the the practice where they like they fix <clears throat> fix everybody. Faces. Oh, uh, Nip they, Tuck or whatever. Nip Tuck. Yeah, he was on Nip Tuck. Yeah, I didn't know he was on that. I didn't even know that. So that's funny. Yeah, he's, uh, he, you know, his music, he does. I've actually met through him. I've been meeting a lot of country Western performers and gotten to know some of them and um, getting drug out to Nashville now and then. So, you know, through him, I'm kind of getting exposed to this whole other world I've never been exposed to. So that's been kind of nice. But no, he's a he's a he's a super guy. In fact, he just had a birthday about a week ago. So he was so cool when he came on the show. He, he came on the first time he forgot. And so we didn't come on and we didn't have a guest when we were in Pennsylvania. Oh. And I was so upset about it. I mean, yeah. I didn't say anything. And, and I sent him an email and he apologized. He said, oh, my God, can I make it up? And then he came on the next week. And then Ron's daughter was going to be in New Orleans, was was in living in New Orleans or something. And so he invited her to one of his premieres. And he was just oh, nice. like a real Southern gentleman, like like the yeah. way like people used to be like in the old days. In, <laughs> 19, yeah. in 1959, I was in a movie, That Kind of Woman. And that's when I met Tab Hunter. And Tab remained a friend until I saw him two weeks before he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, Tab Hunter, I have to say, if ever you want to meet a genuine, regular guy, an honest person, a good-hearted person, and a kind human being, it was Tab Hunter. He was the nicest person, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And I loved him. And I said to him years later, Tab, I met you when I was 19 and I had such a crush on you. He said, you were 19? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, and we didn't get a thing going. I said, I wanted to get a thing going, but you didn't acknowledge me at all. You just thought of me as a fellow actor. He said, oh, and you were 19? <laughs> He kept repeating it. Tim Hunter. <laughs> Sounds he like was he was a disappointed. Yeah. He was a wonderful fella, full of jokes and all. He loved his horses, and and he 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 was regular. He didn't like being a movie actor. He didn't like any of it because I said to him at an interview at the uh, Palm Springs Film Festival, I said, Tim, would you ever go back to work if a good script came along? And he said, no way, been there, done that. No, thank you. I've had enough of Hollywood. Yeah. And and he did. He was, he was a sweetheart. So we got to go. We got to go. Hang on. So you guys follow Jeff on Instagram at Jeff Caperton. Uh, Jeff's going out of town again tomorrow. So I hope you have a great weekend and enjoy all of everything that's going on. I'm going to send you the deck later and um, yeah. take a look at Thanks it. We want to thank you so much for coming on and filling in at the in a pinch. You've been a, a superstar. We appreciate it. And Jeff, we guess what? so much, guys. Jeff, guess what? Yes, sir. You're another nice guy. You're a regular well, Joe. You. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, I like thank you. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that very much. That means a lot coming from you. And happy birthday, Dawn. And birthday, everybody Dawn. else, say bye to everybody in the chat room. All right, we're going to go to then. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, Have Jeff. a good one. Bye, thank everybody. We'll see you next bye -bye. week with Clown Motel 3. Bye. Yeah, that's going to be a fun show. Yay. <laughs> All right, everybody. So Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix.
Mix, it's another episode. Here we go, the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell.